by the end of this class, workshop, conversation, we should have an understanding of how to set caloric target targets for surplus, deficit, get our athletes more jacked, get them leaner for competition or for weigh-ins, like George Borzilla just had. Understand what some main pillars are in the nutrition hierarchy, how to establish a maintenance, how do we find maintenance calories, how do we get athletes bigger, when to get them bigger, the rate to maximize muscle protein synthesis and muscle accrual, macros, what do we do? Carnival, do we do a vegan diet? Do we go keto? So much out there. Frequency, timing, how do we kind of maximize the athletic preparation schedule so they can make it, we can make it as easy as possible for them as coaches. And then pre-training, which is a big question. How do, how do we establish pre-training calories and targets before performance and before exercise to make sure they're fueled adequately? And then we'll talk about, very briefly, carbs and performance. Are they critical? And we'll go through an example of you guys. And then go through that example you had, or that question you had done. Yeah, so, first of all, nutrition for performance. Some of you may be able to guess these. I want to see if there is a hierarchy in nutrition for the most important factors to get the outcome, to get results, to get progress. What are these words here? First one is A. What am I trying to say there? The most important thing. Anabolic phase. Not anabolism, not anabolic phase, no. I mean, I see. No. It's beyond nutrition. But no. Yeah. Right. This is like we think nutrition, we think in like science and like the details. We need to zoom out even further. We can have all this set, all the numbers set, but. Adherence? Exactly. Well done. If the athlete isn't adherent, I don't give a fuck about your PhD. I don't care about your perfect plan. All, everything we do should be circled around how do we get the athlete client to be more adherent. I know, Borzilla, you've heard this multiple times from so many people, but some of you guys may have a bit of a different approach to how you think about nutrition for yourself. Um, that's why the best diet is the one you can adhere to the most to get the desired result. So if that's, a, if that's fasting for you, great. If that's five meals a day, great. So adherence, we have to manage behavior and habits as ideally as possible to max, maximize adherence. Doing the actual thing consistently. Now beyond this, once this is ticked, then we can worry about the rest. So what's number two? Now we're talking more nutrition. Okay. Yeah. Man, imagine if I didn't put the, the letters up. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be just what? Calories. Yes, exactly. Calories. So total amount of energy coming in is very important. So are we in a surplus? Are we in a deficit? Are we in a maintenance? Like. So many athletes, particularly in season, what do they struggle with? Eating, like, just getting their food to actually supply, sorry, to fuel their playing. Like, we've got athletes in here, obviously, you know, train, they do team sports. Yeah. And, like, that can be another advantage of, like, tracking calories. At least you know, like, how much energy is coming in and, like, how much fuel you're getting in terms of carbs, protein, fats. Right, it's like eating and it's like, Yes. Find you underfueled and you're just fucked when you go to Saturday. Exactly. Like you're yeah. playing catch up. Yeah. Exactly. You're being reactive. That's what that's a good point. So calories. For, for your in season athletes, particularly, I mean I use the example of like an NBA athlete. These guys are so big, so tall, they have such high demands. Um, yeah, most of them are pretty skinny and lean. Visible abs most of the year, particularly in season. Their demands are so extreme on the outlier, their outliers with, the, with their amount of energy expenditure that of course these guys aren't jacked like NFL players. Like the sheer volume of food they would need. Like if I need 4,000 calories a day at my 
you know, mostly daily training at my size, imagine somebody 10, 20, 30 kilos heavier, oh, but they have like double the amount of exercise volume. So now we're talking five, six, seven, eight thousand calories a day. Of course, they're at a maintenance like most of the time. So we have to manage like, this has to be like a, a very important thing we pull because if there's not enough of this, then energy, fatigue, we sacrifice nutrients. You know, Steph Curry uh, talked about how one of the things that has helped him a lot during the conditioning wise was getting bigger and stronger. I think he's getting like, if anybody knows, like, there's like five, six, seven kilos in, in the last few years. And he's not jacked by any means, but he's just bigger and stronger. We don't have to get our guys like bodybuilders, but we, we should get them bigger and stronger. And that's pulled by this. What's the next one? Number three. Macros. Exactly. And this is going to be applied for you guys as well. This is not just athletes. This is your any like this is all of us. Macros. So what's the split of protein, carbs, fat? We'll talk about that in a second. What's four? Four or five? Yes. Now we're not going to really dive into that today because it's a big uh, conversation. That's more for coaching. But key right here. Would that be timing? Yes, right there. <laughs> timing. The timing does, as you can see, it's not one of the most important things, but it becomes particularly important for our athletes who are, uh, have two a days. You know what that is? Two times during the day, yeah. do one strength, one aerobic, one aerobic, or just like two weightlifting sessions. Exactly. Um, so that's frequent for athletes. So we need to know how to manage. I'll write that down to remind myself. Okay, cool. We've got the framework. This is how you should think, this is what you guys should be pulling as coaches. Uh, because you can have some influence here, some guidance. Some of you may want to get into nutrition, some of you um, at least will have some more expertise with yourself, so you can at least get yourself more jacked or leaner. So now the question is, how much, we're gonna talk calories, how do we calculate someone's maintenance? There's a few ways we can do it, but how do we figure out what and it's not a set number, it's a range. That's what you should know. Maintenance is a range. It's a dynamic range between you know, uh, hundreds of calories, depending on the demands. So how do we easily determine someone's maintenance? Well, like traditional, easy way. You just kind of online go like body weight and body mass index, height, and then gender. Kind of like that. And then you could probably make it more complicated if you have, say, DEXA scan, so you could prioritize tissues and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've gone like this either end is like very simple and like more like specific and complex that takes into account lean body mass. Most people won't do DEXA, but anyone could do a simple equation online. You could start there. You could use things like they're complicated equations that you just put into Google. It's like, um, yeah, you figure out your BMR, which is the amount of calories you need just to sustain yourself. And then it can calculate on top of that how active you are. And it does a multiple, it has a multiplier. And it'll roughly give you your expenditure. But all of these are uh, somewhat to moderately to severely inaccurate. And that's fine, we can give you a starting point, but they're all not gonna be 100%. What is gonna be 100% is, very simple, I'm gonna show you guys, like with every client, before I set their calories, that's what I do. I need you to weigh yourself. Every day, same conditions. You have to be clear about that. In the morning, after your bowel movement, no clothes on, check. <clears throat> then, I don't give a fuck about the single number of the day. We care about what? Weekly average. Yeah. Exactly. Same. Then, you're gonna get an average. 
while you're doing this, you will be asking them to weigh and record everything that goes in their mouth. Measure food. Measure intake. By the time you do this for about two weeks, you will see you get them to send, send you their average calories. For example, on my fitness pal, you can do it very easily. That's what I did with you. It's like what I just did with you. <laughs> He's saying behind the scenes now. You get to send them your average calories. And then you look at their body weight. Is it going up, down, or maintaining compared to the week before? Then you know whether the calories they're eating is a given surplus, deficit, or maintenance. That paints the most realistic, specific picture. Does it take you one, two weeks? Yes. Can an equation give you something immediate? Yes, but if it's gonna be inaccurate, then we're gonna to have to make adjustments anyway in one, two weeks. So, you can play with the equation, see if it's accurate. And you can do this. I prefer to do this. And then I can get an idea of where they're at, because like, some people's maintenance is just absurd. Like if someone has a lot of lean body mass, then some of these equations don't capture that. If they have a lot of fat mass, some of these equations don't capture that as much. If their expenditure is really low or really high, or they have some, their, their thyroid function is really high. They have like a thyroid condition, like metabolism can be affected. So this captures and controls all of that. Any questions, thoughts, comments there? Internet? Uh, yeah, it's um so the where is it? Web page under construction. No no go go if you got internet. Oh I only actually got Yeah, go search um search just go on googledrive.com. Um and uh, I want to sign into my account. I want to show you guys something. So the my fitness pal they weigh the grams that they're consuming as well. Or like just like the meal that they have. Yeah, so I'm, example, I got, I got 300 grams of jasmine rice, I measure the a plate, a scale, measure the jasmine rice, I put the meatballs in, I measure everything, okay. each meal. That's it? That's the question? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. Liquids, all good. And you can scan foods really easily. Okay, cool. So we, we got an idea of like where they're heading now. So. If your athlete is in season, at minimum, we want to maintenance. Because we want to maintain enough fuel coming in, but often athletes, what? Happens in season. Have you guys done it yourself? Have you seen how much weight you can lose in season? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what happened to you? I lost like two kilos, yeah. just based off a roll change. A roll change? Yeah, like I went from being a forward now to having minimal... Um, bench times as I'm like on the wing running a full day like full quarters yeah. and, and I've like lost so much weight but like I've gotten super lean now yeah. like it's fucked <laughs> like it's like visible abs lean yeah, yeah it's cool like yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool yeah but did you want that? not really because I've, I've been trying to push up to 70 for like ages now but yeah so what's going to come with that is fat but also a little bit of muscle mm -hmm. right you'll feel quicker because you won't be carrying as much fat but there's less contractile tissue possibly so, we'll talk about some strategies soon, but let's say, who wants to get bigger, you want to get bigger and more jacked, I'm going to make you jacked, but do, you'll know, we'll see. Um, does anybody in this room else want to get bigger, more muscle? All right, great. I'm going to give you guys, you guys can see your clients too. So, what is the rate of uh, weight gain per week? that is shown by the literature consensus, also by coaches, to be that sweet spot of rate of gain per week in body weight. Like per month or per week? Per week. 300 grams? A kilo? Does it depend on something? So, 0.25 uh, grams. Or, yeah, grams per week. Yeah. Pause there, anybody got anything else? I would say 0.5 to 1 kilo. The problem about absolute numbers is... 
depends on the person so much yeah. and the context. Well, the person, the size. Mm. The person's underweight, you get them getting more of their like, adequate weight or something like that, for depending on what they're trying to do. Um, it depends on like, if friend going to be a fucking massive increase. Yeah. And even like, this is like obviously not in terms of interest and performance, but some of the like, is from like an ED sort of background or something that had in the sort of something like that. You don't want to go too, you don't want to like fuck it. But obviously they need to gain weight, you go nuts. Like it's okay, well, we've got to gain a bit of weight. So obviously help in terms of like, Body, bodily function mm-hmm. but if you've got someone that's suffering from that a slow gain can be fine because then they get used to more food they actually like you're used to eating properly and then they sort of put them up as well but that's obviously not our scope <laughs> in terms of no life. but your ED uh, eating disorders Jeremy's talking about I'm so glad you brought that up because I just got a, a most of my girls most of your female athletes whether you know it or not will have some type of body image issue or all the way to trauma based psychological eating disorder behaviour I wish it wasn't the case, but it is. Now, whether we realize it or not, whether you ask those questions or not, in your consultation, in your coaching process, that can make this difficult, triggering, and just frustrating as a coach and a client. So, I would always say, build a team around you. The one thing that's missing from this building is a psychologist or therapist. So you guys, I have Jordan, my, my man, He's my physio, my go-to. Uh, and then I have a naturopath if I need one. And I have doctors and should have also psychologists hopefully too, or at least know how to give them the resource to find it. This, like doing all of this, like <laughs> adherence is significantly undermined by that type of behavior. So then you need to work on psychology and habits and self-talk and affirmations and all that. But that's a different conversation. We can maybe talk about later. But the rate of gain, you got you said an absolute number. The problem about an absolute number is for a 50 kilo female and a 120 kilo guy, it doesn't account for relative uh, mass. So percentage does though. 0.25 to 0.5 percent. This is yes percent. You're all always there. Maybe you've already seen it before and you just mixed it up. This is the rate of gain that we want to look at uh, of body weight per week. Now, obviously, 0.5 is more aggressive. 0.25 is more conservative. So we have like something for our lean gain as people who are really afraid to build fat. It's going to come. You will not escape thermodynamics over a long enough time period. You will gain fat in a surplus over a long enough time period. You can minimize it by slowing your rate of gain. But you just have to be more patient. The, this, these numbers come from like a whole body of literature and they come from basically how do we gain as fast as possible while minimizing fat gain. It sits around here for naturals. What about leaning out? How do, what's the rate to lean out uh, to minimize muscle breakdown? Because if you go too fast, like we can lose a lot of weight, just stop eating for the next week. Fast for a week, right? Fasting comp. Fasting can complicate it because you can get some, I won't even get into it, but on average, what's the percentage we should aim for, we think, intuitively? Just be the same. It's similar. It's not as conservative though, it doesn't have to be. We can sit somewhere between 0.5 